Hey guys, welcome to today's video. This is the much anticipated Blendiful in action video that I had always, always, always intended on filming and posting close to the launch. We're a couple weeks after launch at this point. And I feel that now that there have been a lot of different opinions, speculations, conspiracies over the Blendiful that I wanted to sit down and just have a chat with you guys first off. So I want to make it widely known, loudly known that this is not a recalled product. It's not a bad product. There are no major issues with the Blendiful and I'm gonna break everything down for you guys so that you better understand it because sometimes when you hop onto social media as a whole, we are somehow conditioned to just look at the negative and we think the negative is the dominating factor and with this, it absolutely is not. I personally felt when I made that launch video that it had enough information to get everybody going and interested if they even wanted to try and order the Blendiful. I really felt it was enough. I felt I had those drop-in moments where I'm applying product physically. You see me wiping product on the face. I'm talking about the different things that it does. I also felt comfortable that on the site you have a guide with photos, written instructions, everything you really need to know A to Z on how to use this product. I also am very aware that this is not a brand new product. It is just my spin on this particular product and also the idea that you have the freedom to use it however you like. And I felt it was a hole missing for consumers. You can't go into a store really anywhere and find this product. It's difficult to source, it's difficult to find. You're not gonna get the same quality elsewhere, in my opinion. And I just felt it was a necessary tool to make more readily available to the everyday makeup lover. And that's what's different. You know, you go to makeup school and a lot of the teaching is never use a liquid with velour. I scratch that. I'm like, no, step outside that thought. Use makeup how you wanna use it. If you get a great result, that's the name of the game. You wanna look good, you wanna feel good. If you can get it to perform in a way that makes sense for you, why not? Don't limit yourself. I've always said with artist tools, whether it is a eyeshadow brush or a liner brush that you wanna use for this, that, the other, you can, you are your own artist. And that's something that I really believe in with my brand. You know, I say author your own beauty. Beautiful is your story to tell, it's yours. You're in control of it, you get to take charge, you get to make those choices. And at the end of the day, if you look in the mirror and you're happy with the result, that is it. I absolutely was always going to sit down and give that in-depth video, like all the tips, all the techniques, all the different ways, all the different uses, because I do use my Blendiful on the daily. This is something I personally reach for all of the time. The reason that I didn't pre-film it and the reason that I didn't have it ready to go, and a lot of you guys are confused, like why wouldn't she pre-film that? Why wouldn't she have that ready? I thought I had enough of a window of time to make this happen while giving other creators and giving the customer time to get to know the product. I didn't wanna to totally cannibalize other creators from having the opportunity to really test the product and review it like they were buying it you know, off the shelf and giving it an honest, solid review from that. Wow. What? Whoa. Damn. Okay, wait, wow. It really did blend it in. I mean, it looks so good. Everything is really nice and smooth. My face looks so nice and blended. So my thought process was give a little space. People are gonna love this. They're gonna figure it out. There's enough information on the website. There's enough information in that launch video. It's a pretty intuitive product. Very intuitive to just kind of press, roll, and then kind of blend down a little bit in certain areas. It's completely intuitive. Like, I just I just kind of feel like I know what I'm doing, even though this is my first time. In my mind, I genuinely thought that I would launch the Blendiful, explain it, have the website, have the feedback, and I could sit back down and do this video right here. Probably not with this intro, but still do this video right here showing you guys a talk through application. But I also thought I would always be accompanying that with an IG story, a snap story, little video here and there and that was the intention and unfortunately I after my anniversary trip had a pretty serious endo flare-up it was really rough I was in a lot of pain anybody that struggles with that which there are plenty of women that do this affects one in ten women and there is no cure there are ways that you can cope and deal with it 
but it's pretty intense. It was more intense in my early 20s. I have mentioned this on my channel before. My sister Erica, nurse Erica, she's had multiple surgeries with her endo. It is more aggressive than mine, which is crazy because I know that I'm already in a significant amount of pain when I get a flare up. So it's a sensitive subject. It is tied to my fertility. It's not something I'm comfortable with for so many reasons. Uh, one of them is because my inbox is everywhere from email, Twitter, Snap, IG, become this circus of inappropriate questions. A lot of them are appropriate and comforting and wonderful, but the section that isn't is really devastating when people ask you if you've had a miscarriage, if you're pregnant, or the snarky troll hater comments that you're supposed to just not let affect you at all, because we're supposed to not let hate comments affect us at all. If you're a public figure, that's like rule number one, don't get emotional. But you guys, I'm human and anybody else that you watch is human as well. And I would urge you to remember that and be mindful of that because we all have feelings, all of us. I do and you do. And when someone tells me, oh, you're talking about your endo again, don't you know that that's why you're never gonna get pregnant? It really, really hurts. So what I struggle with is not just painful in the body. It's emotionally painful and that's why I have a hard time talking about it. I had other videos pre-filmed. I felt comfortable with that. I took a moment. I took a pause. I tried to film an IG story twice, but I was so nauseous and in so much pain that it just did not feel right to have that be my first go at sharing with you guys how to use something that I am so proud of. I did not wanna feel sweaty, puffy, out of it, in pain, nauseous, headache, emotional. Like I just felt like I needed time. And I also felt really vulnerable to just tweet that out because then that becomes the whole thing. Literally, I made one response publicly in a thread where I was not even just like mentioning this as a whole to the whole Twitter audience. I was responding to one subscriber and I said, I'm trying to keep this private. This is what's going on though. And I had DM'd a few people as well about it that wanted to know that we're really just genuinely curious and I'm fine with that. What I'm not fine with is news articles writing stories about this, like stay away from my ovaries and uterus and my fertility and my female situation. Like it just blows my mind that articles or drama channels would actually mention that when specifically they're referring to a tweet that was in a thread where I say, I am trying to keep this private for my emotional health and physical health. Not cool, like really not cool. I don't like it. I think it crosses the line and I have to say something. And I am asking all the drama channels right now, stand down when you're talking about my ability to reproduce, my age and fertility and my endometriosis, my physical pain and my mental health that is tied to the whole thing. Please stand down on that and don't report on it. I would really appreciate it. I'm an open book when it comes to questions about my brand, my channel. If you see that I'm doing something that you think is scandalous, that you wanna comment on, fine, go for it. Please leave my health out of it. To date, we have sold over 100,000 Blendifuls. The number of issues, complaints, and this can be shipping issue. This could be I put my hair dryer too close to the Blendiful. I got curious about the seam, I ripped it open, what do I do? I threw it in the washer without a bag, it's all lumpy. Um, or someone that having like a legitimate tear, like something did happen, maybe they used it while it was still wet, maybe they were too aggressive while washing it. So many different things can happen. And this just happens, you guys. Consumer goods do break. There are times where you do need to replace and assist. And I very much am that company that wants to help and wants to assist and wants the customer to have the best experience ever. That's so important to me. That is the most important to me. And I wanna also tell you guys, this isn't a cash grab. I haven't made a dime from Tati Beauty. Could this possibly be a cash grab? The company has to date earned $15 million in sales. We have paid taxes and then poured everything back into creating and researching and developing new product and ordering materials. And I am building this to be a dream brand for you guys and for myself. This is legacy to me and this is lifelong to me and this is the big dream to me. So it is in no way, shape or form a cash grab. I am not making money from this. I have not made money from this. It's gonna be a long time because I really wanna develop, build and grow 
the right way. So uh, it's not a cash grab and the numbers fall here. We've sold over 100,000 Blendifuls, less than 1% have been affected and have needed customer assistance. We're happy to provide that. I wanna give you guys some reference because the Tati Beauty Textured Neutrals Volume 1, that palette was a smash hit. That palette won awards on different sites for being the best palette of the year. Just so you guys have some perspective, the numbers and the percentage of what we had to make right and assist with customers for one reason or another, whether it was a palette that got broken in transit or a shade that was not in the right spot, whatever it may be, we had to assist double what we have had to assist with the Blendiful. Yet you didn't see any stories popping up online about the Textured Neutrals Volume 1 palette being a cash grab, being faulty, needing to be recalled, that a statement needed to be made. There was none of that. So it is really suspicious and upsetting that the negativity over this very, very, teeny tiny small portion of customers affected, it's very upsetting to have articles written on it. It damages my brand. It scares future customers away, like potential customers that were watching the Blendiful and going, wow, that looks so great. And then they see that there is this overwhelming story that every Blendiful is faulty and it's falling apart. And they're like, you know, maybe not. And that's how it goes. And that's just how competitive the industry is but I am just making right on it and sitting here and talking with you guys. I'm sorry I could not do it sooner. I wish I could, I couldn't, I was not well. That is nothing that I'm making up. I love filming. I love being in the moment with you guys and I always address things as quickly as I can. I needed time for myself. This was very, very stressful because this was a moment that I really wanted to be so gorgeous and beautiful and smooth. And I went on my 10 year anniversary and I just had the best time ever. And I was like, the launch is so great. People love it. I am on a high. I am celebrating a decade with the love of my life. Everything is so good. And I'm having so many hopes of getting pregnant. And I'm like, this is my year. And then like a truck hit me and I needed a few days, not a few months. I needed a couple days because it's just not easy to tweet out a small statement and have it be done. It will never be done just like that because there are so many other questions. So I really wanted to think about what everyone was saying and address it all in one fail swoop. I hope you understand like that's just who I am, how I am, and that's the kind of CEO I want to be. The beauty industry as a whole is very, very competitive. It's a very saturated space at the moment and there is a lot of narrative that gets very pushed to the surface and I am going to touch on that because there were a number of complaints where I personally, you know, thank God I had all the time in the world to be in bed, no makeup, in my pajamas, on my phone, really checking in and that's why I was able to DM so many customers myself. I have an excellent support team that will handle any shipping issues. If you have questions, they're there, like they are there to help you. But I also wanna participate and if I see someone that needs help, I think it's really meaningful for me to send you a DM, check in with you and I did that with everyone that I saw having an issue. And I was pretty alarmed to see the number of people that didn't respond, where I can see that they got my message and they continued to be a little bit ugly about the product online. That's a little weird to me. Or people would check back in and they wouldn't have order numbers. I'm like, I would love to replace this for you. So sorry you had an issue, no order number. Or altogether, the weirdest one is where people be like, no, actually I love it. I have no issues at all. There were enough of those messages that made me take a step back and wonder what is going on here. So I really dug into the analytics. I was very much in tune with customer support, hour by hour, asking what the numbers were, what the feedback looked like, were we having a big issue? Because the Blendiful was definitely tested before it was brought out as a product for consumers. They did industrial washes 
it passed different tests and had to be kind of ticked off a list. So while it is a fabric product and if you tear at the seam, it will rip, you know, the instructions do say gently pat dry. A lot of people were wringing the product out to dry and not following the directions on the package and on the website. Other people were throwing them straight into the laundry and not putting them in a delicates bag and on delicate cycle. So there are ways that you can clean the Blendafold that will ensure that it will be lasting for you and not rip at the seam after the first try. However, there were a lot of pictures that were duplicated, a lot of people coming back behind and participating in conversation. It's that story where one person wants to start a fire and they have other accounts that come back around and push it up to the top. So my eyes on it all, I see what's happening. By the way, I see it clear as day. And I just wanna also have like kind of a Tati educational moment with you guys, specifically to my younger audience. You have a digital footprint. There's metadata in every photo that you post online. Your IP address is tied to your Twitter. So even if you have five, six, seven, 10, 12 accounts and you have different icons and a teddy bear account or no picture at all, which is the most suspicious, uh, you're tied to that and to the right set of eyes, people will figure it out. I grew up in Seattle and a lot of my family and friends, they write code for a living or work in the tech industry. It's a fascinating industry. And you know, this is nothing to be fearful of. I'm just saying you should operate online in a way that wouldn't embarrass you if someone put the curtain back. So just word of the wise, not a lot that you do online is private. This is the big one that just kind of kicked me in the gut the most because it's tied to a bigger issue as a whole. This is just makeup, but news outlets, professional news outlets, journalists, these dot coms that we go to for information that we feel comfortable is correct. We're leaning on you to do your job and to do that fact checking. And I think it's irresponsible when you illustrate a narrative of a product that might need to be recalled and create hysteria and fear and, oh my God, I bought one too and maybe mine's gonna break. Oh my God, what do I do? You know, and it creates this feeling and this anxiety and we're doing this off of what? Five, eight photos? That's it? Out of 100,000? You can absolutely contact me. My DMs are open. You can at mention me and I will happily be transparent and share with you because I do have the data. And out of 100,000, if you are showing that the majority, your eight photos, five photos, whatever, tells the complete story, I'm here to correct you and say it doesn't and that you need to do better fact checking. That's your job. Step up to the plate and do it because if you are someone that is writing articles and sharing stories, whether it be makeup or world events, it matters. People are looking to you as a leader in some capacity to give them the correct information. Stop spreading fear, stop creating a storyline that isn't true. And every single time I will sit here and I will be as transparent as I need to be to set the record straight. Let's start looking at the good here instead of constantly like looking for all of the bad. We all collectively have the power to stop that. And we have the power to pull back, have some perspective, ask questions and go, but wait, like, but how many are bad? Like, you know, what's going on here? Give me a minute. I will address it. You guys know how I roll. I'll address it. I will. Um, I would have preferred for any reporter or drama channel to reach out to me directly and ask those numbers. Um, I have handed them off to a handful of people. So it's nothing that I was running and hiding from. It's just the timing was really, really bad, but I knew what was happening and that I didn't need to panic because it's not a bad product. So this is just me kind of clearing the air, making you feel better about my most recent launch. There's nothing to be worried about. And if you ever have an issue at all, I am so here to assist you and so is my team. And I think that being said, let's just hop right into the tutorial portion of this video. And then we will also do a little bit on the cleaning and care of your Blendiful. All right, you guys, let's get right to it. This is what this video truly is about. It's about the application and technique and all the things that you need to know about the Blendiful that maybe you've been curious about. 
Now, yes, there are step-by-step -step instructions that are a guide on the tatibeauty.com website, but the reality is you can use this tool however you see fit. If you wanna use it even for eyeshadow, cause I have girlfriends that are like, oh my gosh, I used the Baby Blendiful, took a little eyeshadow, swiped it on. It's so quick, I love it. Really, it's up to you to use your tools how you see fit. I've said that so many times about even eyeshadow brushes that I will use for highlight or an eyeliner brush that I will use as a liner brush when doing liquid lips. You can use your artistry tools however you see fit. There's no wrong way to do it, with exception of I would not use the seam to actually put it on your face. There's a little bit of uh, a raise in the fabric there where the fabric meets, so it's not as soft as the actual, you know, flat surface of both the large Blendiful and the baby Blendiful, and that's to be expected. So that would be a common sense area where I would not suggest using the seam on the face. It won't feel as nice, it won't blend as nice, so maybe don't do that. But if you wanna tap the product in, if you wanna buff the product in, if you wanna fold it up and use a smaller area to do detail work, that's where I'm saying use it how you like. The baby Blendiful is much more firm. There is a different center in the smaller Blendiful. Now that is because for me, I wanted to have something portable, smaller, that could be used as more of a detail highlight type of a tool or a touch up tool on the go. But if you wanna use it for something else, go for it. As long as you're happy with the end result, go for it. So we're gonna dive right into the package itself. I just ripped her open and we have the Baby Blendiful right here. We also have the teardrop rounded pointed, you know, you got all these different edges to work with and fold up the larger Blendiful. Now, something I do wanna say, it's not a huge issue. If you're going like this with a brand new Blendiful before you wash it, you might experience, you know, a few fuzzy flyaways, kind of similar to how you would experience a brand new makeup brush shedding a couple of hairs. It's nothing to be alarmed by. If you wash it, it's not gonna happen again. Okay, so let's get to priming. Now, I don't recommend personally using a very thin liquid primer with the Blendiful, you just don't need to. And it is fabric, so it's gonna absorb some of that product and it just kind of wastes the product. So I wanna give a heads up, just use your fingertips, make sure your fingertips are clean. But if you have something like the Tatcha primer right here that is more hydrating and you wanna go in with it, you absolutely can. So I'm gonna do that right here. And you see I'm kind of pulling lightly and then patting it in just to give the skin a little extra slip, a little extra hydration. And at first I was not the biggest fan of the Tatcha primer, but this is actually how I ended up using less and getting a better result where I was like, oh, I understand why everyone loves this so much. Like this is so great. Cause it just gives you this nice barrier and this nice plushiness on the skin in between your skin and the makeup. So I really love that. It's quick as can be. Moving forward, we're gonna go into a pore filling primer. You guys know I love this stuff. This is from Tarte and I'm going straight in. I'm not putting this on the back of my hand. I'm literally going straight in here and I'm grabbing a generous amount. Now I'm going on the back of my hand and kind of smoothing it out over a larger portion of the Blendiful. So it's kind of in there right here where I want it to be now on the tip of the Blendiful folded in half. And I'm now gonna go and kind of pat into those areas. Like right here for me is a real problem area. Foundation always separates right here. I get this line. And that's part of why I like this product so much because you can really get in there and press and use pressure. Like you can actually press product in instead of having this separation between the pressure of your fingertips and a sponge or a brush. You control exactly what you want to have happen. So here I'm actually feeling the bone right here and I'm pressing not super hard, but hard enough that it is smoothing away those pores and vanishing any texture that's uneven. 
So if you imagine, I always say like buttering a English muffin, which is disgusting to think of your face like textured like an English muffin, but hang with me or like priming a wall. You know, you want to get that material in those little holes and divots and you want to press it in and then wipe it away so that you're left with this like very smooth, clean surface to work with. And that's why this is so phenomenal for priming. Now, do I do this all over my face everywhere? No, I do not. Only in the areas where I know reflection will happen and you're gonna see that texture. So typically up here, press, 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 whisk it away, press and whisk. I feel very smooth. I feel ready to take on the day, but first foundation. So what I do is I'm working off a palette or you can work off the back of your hand. Do we see? I have saturated the tip of the Blendiful. What I do is I fold it like a little taco. So here's my like Blendiful taco, okay? <laughs> and I have my fingers, like my thumb here, my pointer finger behind here for pressure, and my middle finger is wrapped around the other side. So what I am doing now is I am going to first kind of swipe, 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 that looks heavy, right? You're like, dang, she lost her mind. No, I have not. I just am after perfect makeup. So what I'm gonna do now is stamp, okay? I get that initial lay down and then I stamp and I'm bringing it up, right? Remember how I said about the nose? Boom, boom. Okay, this area right here, Oh, it's everybody's nightmare, right? For some reason, right on your jaw here, it just never wants to blend. You look in the mirror in the car and you're like, truth be told, I thought I blended, but I didn't. And if you run into that because you're in a hurry or you have bad lighting or whatever the situation is, if you have one of these in your makeup bag to go in the car, in your purse, whatever, this is really great for smoothing out the mistakes that you may have made that you weren't aware of. So this is also your great like emergency, emergency makeup fixer, like on the go, you know? So I'm gonna do the same over here and we're gonna blend out and I'll be right back. I'm gonna go underneath the eye with Light Medium Honey from Tarte. This is Shape Tape, and I'm literally just gonna use a pretty understated amount for someone like me. I just, I do like to go a little hard with the concealer, but with this, it's pulled back a little bit. So I'm gonna now, instead of going right on the tip of the triangle here, I'm actually gonna flip it upside down and I'm gonna go down here just so I have a fresh corner to work with. And I'm just gonna start at the inner corner and I almost tuck it up in here and press because this area tends to not want to blend too. There are different areas of the face because we're three dimensional and we're not just flat that require a little bit of extra TLC and a lot of the time we tend to look straight on and we forget that we have these different angles. So something nice about this is you can really get up in there and blend and pat it out. And now we wanna set it and forget it. And that means that I'm gonna set my concealer before it has a chance to be naughty and crease. So I'm gonna grab dun, 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 my CoverGirl favorite under eye powdering. This just is so good. It's 110, creamy natural. You can tell that I love this. And what I like to do now, uh, and be gentle with this, you guys, it's not indestructible. I cannot say that enough. Like be gentle. The same way you wouldn't want to drop a powder eyeshadow or highlighter and have it break on the floor. Like things don't last forever. Don't like rip on this. It's fabric, okay? So we're gonna have this inside out now. We have a fresh 
side to work with. We've done creams over here. Now we're gonna do powders on this side. First, I do wanna re-pat things out to make sure everything's smooth. Then I'm gonna grab my powder, you can see here. And I'm gonna go and really press this in. And I like that I can kind of tuck it right up underneath those lashes and just set everything perfectly. Feeling good. I like to do that before I go in with any loose powder. If I really wanna lock in the face, I will do this and I will bake. And I wanna show you, just so you guys get a visual of what the baking process looks like. Get some in the lid ready for you. And don't breathe it in. So I'm gonna grab this and just stamp it in the lid. So I have a nice amount of powder here. And now I'm gonna tuck it the same way I was before. I usually start kind of in the center and then move it upward a little bit. And I'm just lightly letting it live right there and there. This is great to do as well if you are gonna be doing a smoky eye look and you want something here that you're gonna later sweep away to catch any potential fallout. Okay. Now you can go to the sides of the nose pretty easily. Now, something nice you can do also, because of the length of this guy, you can really coat as long as you like on this little like, you know, our little taco shape that we have here. And this way, if you go along here, you're not gonna tug at the face at all the way you would with a brush or a sponge if you choose to do baking in this area. So find exactly where you like to bake to kind of keep this area nice and clean and brightened. Boom. And now we wait. Okay, I'm bored, let's go. So you don't have to necessarily let powder bake for ages and ages and ages. I don't always do that. Now the method of baking is really for stage performance and to really lock the makeup in. It is using your own body heat to really set the powder and have it kind of grab into the skin and then you whisk off the excess that is baking. And I wanna make mention of something, my friends. I am in no way, shape or form suggesting that you never use brushes again, that you only use the Blendiful. That is not the suggestion. This is supposed to be a helping hand to what you already own and have and love. Don't feel limited to just using the Blendiful, even though if you're traveling, if you're getting ready really quickly, or if you're somewhere and you only have a small makeup bag and you're like, well, I'm happy that I have this with me because I can accomplish so much with this one tool, then it's great. But you don't have to abandon your other tools that you love that work well for different products. So I am gonna still use a brush to just swirl off this bake. And if you guys want me to do like a, the Blendiful only challenge, you know, even using it with cream products on the eyes and doing just everything with it, I'm so down to do that. But I just wanna give you a realistic tips and tricks. See, okay, I just got a brush hair on my face. This is Tom Ford, very expensive. Doesn't mean that I need to throw it in the trash. Doesn't mean it's defective. Bristles come off, fibers come off, it happens. It's not the end of the world. I hope that you guys are hearing me from a loving place, that I'm not trying to scold you, I'm just trying to make you feel more comfortable, that that does happen with tools. And it's really nothing to be worried about. And again, with any issues that anyone experiences, I am so here for you. I want you to enjoy my products, that really matters to me. So if you have questions, you can always reach out to customer support. I do read everything, see everything. I'm in tune with everything. You know, I want you guys to have the best experience possible. That matters so, so much to me. All right, you guys, you know what I'm in the mood for? My very favorite blush. Who can guess what it is? Let's collectively like shout at the screen if you know 
<laughs> what my favorite blush is. This is from Honest. We're gonna use Coral Peach today. I flipped my Blendiful back over and we're now going in to the blush and I'm gonna grab an alarming amount. I'm gonna go off the back of my hand just to get some of that excess off of there. You can always do that and kind of really stamp it into the Blendiful itself before you go straight into the skin. I'm gonna start pressing and tapping. I'm doing this a lot lighter than I was, say, the primer. I'm really into just lightly tapping and building up the color slowly. And if you see any excess powder on my face right now, that is okay. We are gonna do that final spray down. It's gonna make everything mesh together. So I'm really just doing that and it works so nice. All right, just for fun, I'm gonna go into this Patrick Ta. She's adorable, really pretty kind of pinky shade. I'm gonna move over where I had this blush and now I'm just gonna kind of stamp it in here. See, now I have more here because I kind of wanted to get up in here just a little bit. Okay, now I want to do a little bit of contouring, but I'm really only doing it with a bronzer. We're not going too hard and heavy today. Flip back to the powder side, and I am gonna do that swiping motion through here so that I can get it all the way up down on the Blendiful. So now what I'm gonna do is just kind of stamp right in there. Now I'm taking more on a wider portion to kind of go up on the forehead. And it's nice because you can kind of press it back into the hairline a little bit. That way you don't have that weird separation of color from your foundation to your bronzer to your hairline. And now taking whatever excess I have here, I am gonna lightly rub it on the sides of the nose. This is like the very quick contour deal that you can do. Again, if you have a brush that makes you feel like your nose is just, you know, and you wanna do that, by all means do it. But if you're feeling lazy, you have no time, this will get you at least to a place where you feel a little bit better then without it, if you're someone like me that really likes to have just a little, you know, just like a little something. We haven't even gone into highlight. Uh, we're about to do that. I'm gonna use the Glowgasm from Charlotte Tilbury. First, I am going to take my brush and I am gonna use an ambient powder. Now, something like this that is a glazing over the face where I'm just doing like this really quickly, kind of everywhere, I would probably still just use a brush, you know, cause that's what I like to do with it. It's, I don't want it to be concentrated and I'm not pressing it into the skin to elongate my look like I am a loose powder. So that I would still use a brush with. You'll kind of figure out what you like to use the Blendiful for versus your other tools. I'm not delusional in the sense that I'm suggesting like you guys, and you can even do like a really killer winged liner with this. It's gonna be the best ever. This is a tool that will just help you do things quick and help you to do those larger steps a little bit more flawlessly, but it doesn't have to always be for every single thing. Okay, what I like to do with this is kind of, again, tuck my finger in here and I find that high point where that bone kind of is where I want the highlight to be. And it concentrates it right there. Sometimes I'll take whatever excess and kind of just tap on the extra areas that I want, like maybe a little, little extra glow, you know? Okay, I'm gonna take Charlotte Tilbury in Hot Gossip. I 
think we're ready to set the face and be on our merry way. All right, so I love having my Dyson or hair dryer ready to go. Don't use this on a hot setting. Make sure you're not using it on high heat or high setting. Oh my God, I sweat glitter, it's really weird. All right, you guys, so here is the full face finished using the Blendiful for most products. When it comes to my face, I did use a brush for my eyes and my fingertips for glitter and an eyeliner and brow pencil. You guys get that. But what I wanna mention is that I did use the Blendiful for the Tatcha primer, for pore filling, for my foundation, for concealing, for pressed powder, loose powder, cream blush, bronzer, and highlight. This is a very versatile tool. You can use it for a multitude of things. So this is all I used right now. So instead of having my typical, you know, jar of brushes that I would need to clean, I just need to take a couple of minutes and clean this guy right here. It takes less than three minutes. And I wanna to emphasize to you guys that are saying, oh my gosh, how high maintenance. This is just so tough to clean. I, I don't think I would wanna wash that every time. If you're someone who's spending a lot of time or concern worrying about your skin and your skin's health and breakouts and clogged pores and you know raised bumps and texture. You're not doing yourself any favors by not cleaning your brushes altogether. So whether you use this tool or you use brushes, clean them. Most of us are not cleaning them every single time, let alone once a week. Some people only clean them once a month. Some people kind of wipe them down on a towel as needed, but you really should be cleaning your brushes because they attract and harbor bacteria and you're wiping that all over your face. And if you think about it for a moment, you could potentially be causing a few skin irritations and breakouts. So I really feel comfortable in the idea of something like this, washing it, cleaning it, and having it be fresh, replacing so many tools so that it's not overwhelming to need to clean your tools only takes a couple of minutes. It's a different way of looking at things. So again, this is just opening up your mind to a new idea, a new perspective, a new take on how to do your already existing routine just with less tools. You know, I'm not saying forego all of them, but with less tools, less cleanup cleaner tools, cleaner skin, altogether better blended look. Now it is not a permanent last forever. This is not like a Willy Wonka everlasting gobstopper. You do need to replace these the same way you would a beauty blender. It can outlast a beauty blender in my opinion in terms of bacteria because you have this cloth barrier before you get to the sponge in the center. You can really drench this and you know there have already been videos made where people will cut them open and nothing hits the sponge. So even though you don't have to replace this like every week, you will after a couple of months probably wanna buy a new one just because fabric wears down the same way if you wear a t-shirt over and over and over and wash it over and over and over, eventually it will get worn. So I just wanna be clear about that. It is not a permanent, permanent item that you'll have for years and years and years and years. And I wouldn't recommend that anyway with a tool that is a sponge or a velour puff altogether. So those are my thoughts on that. And shall we get to some cleaning? I think we shall. Let's do a visual of how to clean your blender. All right, guys, so we are going to clean our Blendiful. It's pretty easy to do, just a little bit of warm water and a soap of your choosing. You can use, of course, baby shampoo, hand wash. You can use brush cleaner. My preferred soap is actually bar soap. And this is because I do tend to use a lot of heavily pigmented creams that have oils in them. And I wanna make sure that I am cleaning my Blendiful, but still being gentle. I don't wanna tug at the seams. I don't wanna wring any of the water out by twisting it up like a towel. You just wanna make sure that you're not too rough with it. Be gentle. If you do choose to wash your Blendiful in the washing machine, just make sure it's on a delicate cycle. Again, I cannot reiterate this enough. You do want to be gentle with this product. It is made of cloth. It is obviously best to clean it right after use, especially if you're using wet products so they don't dry into the Blendiful itself. But if you're in a rush and you forget to clean it, if it's been kind of soaking into the Blendiful all day and you didn't wash right away, just let it sink in for a minute or two, kind of similar to how you would remove waterproof mascara versus regular mascara. You would probably want to use oil and let it soak on your lashes for 30 to 60 seconds before swiping away. So it depends on the products you're using, but there is
is a way to clean this no matter how you choose to use it. Make sure that when you are ready to dry your item, once it is completely clean, that you either pat out the moisture and let it air dry, or you dry it with a hair dryer, but from a distance, a few inches away, not up close, and that you're again on a low setting. These do tend to dry very quickly, but make sure that your Blendiful is dried entirely before you use it for another use. So although these are very, very easy to clean, there is some thoughtfulness in how you handle them. And there you have it, a clean, ready to go Blendiful that is soft and ready for its next use. I hope you guys found this video as a whole helpful and that it answered some questions. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and watching. Make sure to ring the bell and hit subscribe if you have yet to do that. And I will see you guys in my next video.